Hi, in today's session we are going to take up the basic concepts of percentages. Now the term percentages is synonymous with performance in an examination and mark score in an examination. So let's look at an exam example of performance in an examination. A student took up a test which was out of 120 marks and scored 50% of the total marks. When the student spoke to the teacher, the teacher said that performance would be considered as good only if the student scores a minimum of 80% of the total marks. So when the student went in for an exam the next time, the target was 80% of the total. This time however, the total marks were increased by 25% from the previous time where it was out of 120 marks. And the student managed to secure 80% out of the new total. So the question here is, the mark scored by the student in the second exam is how much percent more than the mark scored by the student in the first exam? We will try and solve this question once we go through some basic concepts of percentages. We are looking at this topic of percentages. Now what is really the meaning of percent? Percent means per 100. So when we say 80%, basically what we are saying is 80 on 100. So if a percentage value is given to us as 80% and if we want to convert it into a fraction, then all that we do is we divide it by 100. So 80% would be 80 upon 100, which is 4 by 5. Similarly, if we are given a fractional value, let's say we are given a fraction like 2 by 5 and if you want to convert it into a percentage, then what we do is we multiply the fraction by 100. So 2 by 5 multiplied by 100 will make it 40%. So in very simple terms, percent means per 100. Now one of the most common calculations in problems involving percentages is that a value is given and then we need to increase that value by a certain percentage. So if we take up an example where the value given is 30 and we need to increase 30 let's say by 20%. So the most mechanical way of doing it would be 30 plus 20% of 30. But if we observe this closely, we can see that 30 can be taken as common and hence we get 1 plus 20 by 100. So effectively, if we want to increase 30 by 20%, then essentially we are finding 120% of the number. So whenever we want to increase a number by X percent, we should find 100 plus X percent of the number. Instead of increasing, if we want to decrease the number, suppose we want to decrease a number by 25%, we should find 75% of the number. So if we want to decrease a number by X percent, then we find 100 minus X percent of the number. Now this can further be simplified by finding the fractional equivalent of the percentage increase. So here if we wanted to increase the number by 20% then 20% as a fraction is 1 upon 5 and hence we say that a number is to be increased by 1 fifth of itself and hence we actually need to find 6 by 5 of the number. We add the fractional equivalent which is 1 by 5 to 1 and hence we find 6 by 5 of the number. So these uh, examples which means these calculations of increasing a number by a certain percentage can either be taken up in this manner which is 100 plus X percent of the number or find the fractional equivalent of the percentage and hence add it to 1 if we want to increase it or subtract it from 1 if we want to decrease it. So if we were to decrease a certain number let's say by 30% then 30% of the number 30% as a fraction would be 3 by 10 and hence we are finding 1 minus 3 by 10 which is actually 7 by 10 of the number. 
So depending on whether we need to increase the number or decrease the number, we would either add the fractional equivalent to 1 or subtract the fractional equivalent from 1 and accordingly try and simplify our calculations. We are looking at this topic of percentages. Now what is really the meaning of percent? Percent means per 100. So when we say 80%, basically what we are saying is 80 on 100. So if a percentage value is given to us as 80% and if we want to convert it into a fraction, then all that we do is we divide it by 100. So 80% would be 80 upon 100, which is 4 by 5. Similarly, if we are given a fractional value, let's say we are given a fraction like 2 by 5 and if we want to convert it into a percentage, then what we do is we multiply the fraction by 100. So 2 by 5 multiplied by 100 will make it 40%. So in very simple terms, percent means per 100. Now one of the most common calculations in problems involving percentages is that a value is given and then we need to increase that value by a certain percentage. So if we take up an example where the value given is 30 and we need to increase 30 let's say by 20%. So the most mechanical way of doing it would be 30 plus 20% of 30. But if we observe this closely, we can see that 30 can be taken as common and hence we get 1 plus 20 by 100. So effectively, if we want to increase 30 by 20%, then essentially we are finding 120% of the number. So whenever we want to increase a number by X percent, we should find 100 plus X percent of the number. Instead of increasing, if we want to decrease the number, suppose we want to decrease a number by 25%, we should find 75% of the number. So if you want to decrease a number by X percent, then we find 100 minus X percent of the number. Now this can further be simplified by finding the fractional equivalent of the percentage increase. So here if we wanted to increase the number by 20%, then 20% as a fraction is 1 upon 5 and hence we say that a number is to be increased by one fifth of itself and hence we actually need to find 6 by 5 of the number. We add the fractional equivalent which is 1 by 5 to 1 and hence we find 6 by 5 of the number. So these uh, examples which means these calculations of increasing a number by a certain percentage can either be taken up in this manner which is 100 plus x percent of the number or find the fractional equivalent of the percentage and hence add it to 1 if we want to increase it or subtract it from 1 if we want to decrease it. So if we were to decrease a certain number let's say by 30% then 30% of the number, 30% as a fraction would be 3 by 10 and hence we are finding 1 minus 3 by 10 which is actually 7 by 10 of the number. So depending on whether we need to increase the number or decrease the number, we would either add the fractional equivalent to 1 or subtract the fractional equivalent from 1 and accordingly try and simplify our calculations. We we'll now move on to the concept of percentage change. Now what do we really mean by percentage change? Suppose we have a value 30 and that value 30 changes to let's say 40 and then the question asked is how much is the percentage change in the number? Such a question can be solved using a very very simple formula where we say percentage change is equal to change upon the original value multiplied by 100. So here if we look at the change, the change would be 10 and the original value is 30. So the answer would be 10 upon 30 into 100 which actually is one third as a percentage and hence it becomes 33.33%. So the formula for percentage change is change upon original into 100. 
Now moving beyond this concept of very basic percentage change, there are some questions which are based on offsetting an increase. So let's take an example. Suppose we consider one price as one parameter, sorry, as price of a certain commodity. And then we consider another parameter which is consumption of that particular commodity. Suppose we take a commodity like rice and we say the price is 100 rupees per kg and the consumption is also 100 but in terms of kgs and hence when I multiply price by consumption I get the total expenditure which is now 10,000 rupees. Now the problem states that the price is increased by 10% but the overall expenditure remains the same and if that has to happen obviously the consumption has to decrease. So the question asked is if price is increased by 10% by what percentage should consumption reduce so that the expenditure remains the same. Now if price is increased by 10% then the price will become 11 by 10 of the original price suppose it is P and we are saying that the final expenditure has to remain the same as what it was originally so which means it should remain E itself if the expenditure was E. Now if the original price into the original consumption is considered as a unit 1 and if the new price becomes 11 by 10 of the original price then we need to multiply this by 10 upon 11 so as to end up with the same expenditure. So if my new price is 11 by 10 then the new expenditure should sorry the new consumption should become 10 by 11 so that the expenditure remains the same. Now if the consumption becomes 10 by 11 of the original consumption then there is a reduction of 1 by 11 and which as a percentage will be 9.09%. So these questions of offsetting a change which means if the price increases by 10% then the consumption should reduce by 9.09% so that the expenditure remains constant. The way we have tackled this question, we have used the fractional value of the percentage and found the new equivalent value and the reciprocal of that has to be the new consumption value so that the expenditure remains the same. Having taken that as the new consumption value, we subtracted that from 1 and we found the percentage decrease in the consumption. So this is how we can tackle uh, problems involving offsetting a change. Let me ask you a question. I have asked this question actually several times in a class and very rarely have I immediately got the correct answer. Suppose I say x percent of y versus y percent of x. Then are these two the same or are they different? Well, whenever I have asked this as a question in a class, the most common response has been that no, they are not the same. So let's understand how to solve this. X percent of Y would be X upon 100 into Y and Y percent of X would be Y upon 100 into X. So we can see now that both actually mean XY upon 100 and hence these two are actually equal. Now what is the big deal about this? The big deal is if we can identify something like this then we can really speed up our calculations. Let's take an example. Suppose in a problem we want to find 37.5% of 50. But now we know that x% percent of y is the same as y% percent of x. So 37.5% of 50 is actually the same as 50% of 37.5. The moment we write that as 50% of 37.5, the calculation sounds so much simpler and hence we can do it quickly. So wherever it is possible to interchange X and Y, so that the calculation becomes simpler, we should go ahead and do this because X% percent of Y is nothing but Y% percent of X. Having seen these concepts of percentages, let us now go back to our original question. 
Student took an examination. This examination was out of a total of 120 marks and secured 50% in this examination. So the total marks were 120 and the student score was 50% which is nothing but 60. Then we had mentioned that the total marks increased by 25% which means if we increase this by 25% 25% as a fraction would be 1 by 4 and hence if I increase a number by 1 by 4 then I am finding 5 by 4 of the number which would make it 150. So the new examination was conducted out of 150 marks and the student managed a good performance which was defined as 80% of the total. 80% out of 150 would mean a score of 120. The question asked was the score increased by what percent as compared to the original score and hence we can see if you want to find the percentage change in the score it would be the change which is 60 upon the original which is 60 into 100 and hence there is a 100% increase in the score secured by the student. There is another way of solving the same question where we can actually make use of our concept of successive percentage change. If we look at this increase in the total number of marks there is a 25% increase and if we look at the same question can be solved in a different way. Let's look at the values given. The total marks initially were out of 120 and now it is out of 150 which means that there is a 25% increase in the total marks. The performance initially was a 50% performance which changed to an 80% performance. Now when we look at 50% changing to 80% there is an increase of 60% from 50 to 80. So there is an increase of 60% here and an increase of 25% here. So if we make use of our concepts of successive percentage changes, then we say 60 plus 25 plus 60 into 25 upon 100, which would make it 15 and this gives us 100. So straight away using the concept of successive percentage changes, we can find out the overall increase in the performance is a 100% increase. These concepts of percentages are not only useful in the quantitative section but also in the data interpretation section of all these entrance exams. So please be sure you understand these concepts and these ways of quick calculations the way we could solve here and you are absolutely thorough with them so that you can maximize at least in the topic of percentages in these two areas of quant and di.